Well, hello. Long time no see. <laughs> no hear. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, man. This is the audio. Part video, audio, video. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Um. Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Well, I ain't lying. Racism broke me down. I wasn't gonna make no more videos. And my job situation, everything is just like being man. I ain't lying. Been in the storm, in the storm, and man, it wasn't a regular storm. And it wasn't a hard hurricane, man. It's just a lot. It's a lot that popped up. Um, I don't know. Something in me makes, makes me just keep going, but uh, uh, the God in me. Uh, well, what happened is this too. Like I said, I, uh, when I start, uh, my God opened my eyes and, and let me start seeing some things. And man, I'm like, you know, I wanted to close my eyes back up, but apparently they're not going to close back up to what I've seen and uh, what I've seen and what I heard. So what I did. With this neighbor next door, I went down there and I filed a charge, so I'm taking her to court. I don't know how if they're gonna serve her, how it's gonna go about, but at least I got the paperwork showing that I, I'm filing. So I don't know if it's gonna pop off real wild and she might want to retaliate. I really don't care, you know, because she's been retaliating and doing stuff to begin with. And so, uh, I mean, you know, anyway, uh, so I go to court supposedly November the 8th. Why they prolonged it like that, I don't know. But like I said, I know they're going to investigate into it because uh, she called me niggers and she said a whole lot of racial things before. So uh, you know how they'll do. They'll do some little, whatever they do, they investigate it, whatever. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not worrying about it because it's a point of bringing the issue up. So, you know, it's been submerged too long. I've been going through this for three years since I've been here and she gets worse. You know, she don't get better, so, like I said, let it put out in the open. Uh, later on, probably sometime today or maybe tomorrow, I'll show you the gate, because I had to pay to get the gate put back up again. So, uh, I would like to be reimbursed for that, you know, so, uh, like I said, you do things legal. Just all that fighting and arguing with somebody is not necessary, especially with somebody like that, that'll take. You don't like me because of the color of my skin, but then when you confront it with the issue, you want to play dumb. Oh, no, not me, you know. So, like I said, it needs to be addressed in court. First of all, like I said, she's illegally over the fence. That should have been addressed by, well, nobody lived in the house. The house was empty. Now we know why, because they didn't want to deal with her. So, you know, her and whoever was there, you know, like I said, who knows how long she's been there and the previous tenant who really put it up. So... Like I said, you know, why God put me in this situation, I'm still like, you know, like I said, I had to kick back on that because, you know, I'm still puzzled. Like, okay, you open my ass to racism and to see it in this way, so wow. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, let's bring about a whole lot of changes. You know, I wanted to throw my hands up and just give up, you know, and, uh, I mean, when you open your eyes and you see evil, like they say, there's no boogeyman, but when you really see the boogeyman, boogeyman, which is racism, and you see it for the full effect and, and, and the devastation with it, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's not scary. I would say it's not scary because uh, what always comes to my mind, if you go down to the, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, if you go down to the uh, waterfront, me and the kids and the grandbabies, we used to go down there all the time. And walk down there at the waterfront, which is beautiful. It's one of the one of the beautiful things in Louisville, Kentucky, is down the waterfront. They did an excellent job on um, reinventing that. I mean, it's excellent. All down there is gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, it's beautiful. And uh, when you go down there, they have a big old statue of Abraham Lincoln, which I believe the sculpture was uh, Hamilton, uh, uh, Frank Hamilton, the a sculpture here in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, African American, beautiful design. It's powerful and. Uh, it talks, it's got, uh, it's talking about slavery. Anyway, there's a quote written down there that always stands in my mind. It's very powerful. You know, he has, a, uh, Abraham Lincoln, a big gigantic sculpture of him. And then down there, he has another sculpture, like in bronze, where you have slaves and they're shackled by the neck down there. So I'm proud of Louisville for displaying it. I got to give them credit for that. Louisville, Kentucky's bad, you know, you know, they, they bad, bad meaning good. 
You know, that's powerful that they did display that, which shocked me, you know, back even then. You know, I'm like, darn, they put that here, so, you know, they're not ashamed of, you know, they're not uh, ha hiding anything. So I like it. That's why I keep going and I can't let hate consume me. But anyway, there's a quote down on one of the sculptures. Go down there and read it. And it says, I would rather be dead than to be a slave. And uh, I believe it's, uh, I don't know if it's Abraham Lincoln, someone quoted it, I forget. But that's what it says down there, you know. Uh, it's got some, another, another quote down there. But uh, like I said, that's powerful. And uh, I mean, if you don't stand up for something, you'll fall for anything. And like I said, with the racism there, you know, you, you have, she has a lot of gatherings of white people. I don't know what type of meeting she might be having over her, but everybody over there is white. I'm putting this out there because I know hate begets hate. And when a person knows that they're cornered and they're wrong and you confront them, they have a tendency to try to retaliate. And then when they retaliate, they want the person that they're retaliating against to be the, the perpetrator. And so I put my stuff out on video to let you know what's, the, what's going on. So if something pop out, then you already know. I done told you what was happening before it happened. You know, you know, you got caught in what you're doing because I've seen some little stuff, you know. Uh, like I said, it, it'll be a big, it'll be a, a it'll, it'll, it, it, it should be a big issue, but it'll be an issue that's probably going to try to be smashed because I'm taking it to small claims court rather than to the big court, you know, where I could have hit it for $5,000. But it's not so much about monetary, it's just to bring it out there, to bring about a change and make the public aware and the court aware of what you're doing and what you've been doing. You know, and if, if, if I'm wrong and I'm in, unjustified in what I'm doing, then take a lie detector test. When they ask you how many tires was flat, did you flatten the tires, Terry? Female, Terry, did you flatten the tires? Did you mess up those stuff in our yard? Are you willing to take a lie detector test? If you're not willing to take a lie detector test, then pay up for pain and suffering. That's what it's about. But if you can pass the lie detector test, my hat's off to you. Then, hey, okay. Yeah. But I know in my heart, and she know in her heart, she wouldn't even ask for a request of a lie detector test. Because Lord knows what all they, they start asking questions, what all it will reveal. Probably spitting on the house, and Lord knows what else. Like I said, it's, uh, mm. But like I said, I had to take off for a minute because. Hate breathes. It breathes. And I didn't say breathe. B R E A T H. Is that right? Breathe, not breathe. I'm talking about breathe. B R E E D S. It breathes. Hate. And you know, I had to catch myself because you know what I'm saying? She 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 messing with my life. You know, you messing with my livelihood. You 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 know, I gotta watch my house. I gotta go around the corner and come back making sure you're not doing things in my house. You know, when I'm down, you've been on my property numerous times. That's the one I would love to get on a lie detector test for. And know she'd be caught. So I know she ain't going to take no lie detector test. But like I said, you know, I start feeling myself becoming angry. I start feeling myself become filled with hatred. And I don't want to hate a person because of their skin, and especially her. You know, I don't want, I don't really care nothing about her. But to hate everybody because of something that she's doing to one person and the color of her skin, then hate everybody white because she's white? No. You know, so I had to stop and, and see, nah. You know, and uh, I didn't stop and just see it. God started revealing it to me. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't become her. I don't want to become her. I don't want her to even become me. I want her to do what she do. Just leave me alone. But, you know. I mean, like I said, I'm just sitting back and I'm just like, whoa, you know, and I got so many other things on my plate, you know what I'm saying, still dealing with my mother's situation, dealing with all of this stuff, and it really, it got me to a point, it overwhelmed me. Like I said, I, I did a, a Elijah, you know, I had to step back in the cave for a minute, you know, so I have to revamp and re, re, redesign some things, you know what I'm saying, my thoughts and everything, how I, I, I thought and, and felt and believed, all of that has changed. You know, and I'm like, wait, man, I'm in my 50s and now my life changed. And then the, my group of people that's around me, I got to change them again. So I got to change the people I'm around because I spoke to a person, you know what I'm saying. I'm trying to keep my head right. And I asked a person, you know, talking about like black people getting together and trying to help themselves rather than always relying on other people to help them and other minorities to help them. And brother man turned to me and said, yeah. 
I don't worry about that. Every man for himself. I said, oh, diggity dog. That's what made me get out here because I was like, oh, wait a minute now. Oh, yeah, I'm slipping, but I ain't slipped. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I don't want to get there. I don't want to forget about the goals and, and the dreams and the vision because I, I was ready to say F it and, and forget it. But when I talked to him and he said that every man for himself, you don't care about nobody but yourself. Get yours. If they get theirs, they get theirs. And I'm like, no, nah, you know, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, maybe, I don't believe it's God that put me next to her. I don't, it's not God so much that, that's involved in this. The devil has his hand too, and he's been picking. You know, and he, get, he gets his vessels and he uses them. So I know she's a tool of the devil. And so I had to look at that, you know. If anything can make me change my vision and change my goals and my plan, it would be her. And like I said, she came close to doing that. And that's, what, and that's when I realized it's the devil, and it's really, I'm saying God, but it's really the devil. Because anything that wants to take and take you off with the tool, off with the, uh, the, the path that God put you on, that's the devil. And it's a tool of the devil. And they don't mean you no good. So, but like I said, as I'm even talking to you, I'm seeing my way clear, you know. And I see it's her. Like, today I went out, some dude tried to take a picture. And, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to worry about that. The devil's jumping in my head. How are they coming out? Man, I'm not going to get paranoid on that stuff right there. That's why I said, I get on her and make a video. You know, if any retaliation occurred, it came on her part because the truth and the light, well, a line of truth can't dwell in the same house. And I know I got the truth. I know what you did. You know what I'm saying? Without a doubt, you know what you did. And like I said, she had a habit. I was trying to cover it up. She had some white dude get on the porch last week. And uh, when I was taking pictures so I could take the court, and she going to have me sit on the porch and mean mug me sitting on the back porch doing some menacing look. I still went to my door and stood. But you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, you know, it's all good what you're doing. Because I, I got a picture of him sitting on the back porch staring at in my door. And I'm going to take it to court. So I'm like, you know, I don't have to win with cussing a person out. I don't have to win with physically fighting a person. Take stuff to court. And presented it in front of the judge. And when you present things in front of the judge, it's 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 recorded and it's out there, it's documented that you came correct. Always come correct. Then anything else that follows about it is what it is. You justify it in whatever you do. But make sure you go straight to the court. Do your legal things first. Then that person, then you know, then whatever that person they do, you know, they get they they just do. You know what I'm saying? Justice, justice works if you work it. That's what I'm just here about. Justice works if you work it. And, uh, and uh, like I said, I got a lot on my plate. Got a lot of things going on. And, you know, I ain't lying. It was like, a, a man, I got beat down. I ain't lying. I was like down on the floor because I couldn't even deal with this. You know, and it still had me some. And like I said, I'm not going to let this bother me. It's not that. You know what I'm saying? Because I got other things on my mind more than her. And like I said, what I'm learning too is distraction. You know, it's a song of, I can't think of this chick's name. It's got to say, focus. Stay focused. It's talking about focus. Focus, baby. You know what I'm saying? And it's got some hand clapping in this cold. You know, and I heard it a couple of years ago. And uh, it, it's true. A lot of times, every, when everything keeps on boarding you, and I know, I know it's me, it's true. When a whole lot of stuff starts coming at me, it's distracting me. Because my main goal was to help these people have this program down here. Then all of a sudden, here she is doing stuff again. You know. And it's trying to throw me off. And I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to allow it to, to distract me. Like I said, if you knew that somebody's calling you niggas and names like that. And y'all know this going on. Why would you take and prolong the case to November? I'm in there. I'm hearing other cases that's going to be done in October. So the summer will be gone, so she'll still be enjoying her back porch when I can't enjoy my house. I can't look on anything on the left side, what is it, on my kitchen side of my house. I can't look out. She can look in my house. So I don't have, I haven't enjoyed any of my house three years I've been here because of her. You know, let me take that back. I had some little enjoyment, but peace of mind, enjoying opening windows and doors where I was standing on that deck and peeping in my house. No, I haven't had that. You know, I haven't had that. I'm not going to bite my tongue about it. I haven't had it. It's been miserable living next door to her. You know, it's been miserable living in a neighborhood with white people. Family, some black people on the left and right of me. And they don't talk to them. So it's not like, you know, if we go to court, whether we go or not, the truth is the truth. 
They don't speak to none of the black people. It's three new black people because the houses were empty. They moved down the block. They don't speak to them neither. So I'm not a I'm not a special case. It's just that I've been enduring it longer than them. And to be pacific about it, the other black people don't care. Even the man in the back. I spoke to him. He said it don't bother him. So he does. He, they don't care. So you know, like I said, they don't live next door to her. But they said they don't. He did. He said he don't care. And so other than that, they don't talk to nobody black. They just do what they do, you know. And what I love about America is, is the, they say the home of the brave and the land of the free. Like I said, you see all the protests going on now. But in reality, it is. You have a freedom of speech, you know. And, and if you don't want to like black people, that's fine. All I say is just keep that over there. Don't come over here picking with me and throwing stuff in my yard and turning up my yard because you're jealous and you, and, and you hate black people. Or you hate me being black. Don't mess with me. Stay over there. We got too much property land uh, where you can do what you want to do except for that debt that you got that you can look all down the street with. It's, and it's illegal over there. So that should have been dress, addressed a long time ago while you calling the, uh, 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 the Shabley Council out on me and having them to get on me about my kind was getting ready to find me until I addressed that issue and then they backed it up and didn't take me to court and didn't find me because I addressed it wrong with wrong. So... Even they the ones that told me that she called the police on me. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, that's why I'm not worrying. I'm not worrying about it. Like I said, it's just another thing to try to distract me. But like I said, I've been sitting back listening to a lot of people. Oh, you know, be Christian. You know what I'm saying? You know, put the shoe on the other foot. I don't put the shoe on the other foot. Not I'm being Christian. Uh, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Jesus would have did a whole lot of other stuff to her. But like I said, yeah, it been time to take it. Of course, should have did it a long time ago. Should have did it when it first occurred. You know, like I said, no more listening to people telling me what to do and what they think is best. I'm not doing that. You know, not in that way. How to handle situations that's bothering me. I'm no longer going to deal with that. I got a new agenda. You know, I got a lot of uh, uh, something new because some things been going kind of wacky. And it's time to um, it's time to to make a change. And like I said, if these changes don't occur, I'm giving it to the end of next month. If I don't see significant change, then um, I don't know. Maybe the dream is not. Maybe it's just a dream, you know. Because I went to church and it was I didn't even want to go to church because I hadn't been to church for two two week two weeks. What a Saturday Sunday something. And so uh, look at my feet. Ooh, God. Anyway, I hadn't been to church for a while, and uh, I went to church uh, Wednesday, and um, it was powerful. They got this guy, I forgot his name, he's from out of town, and I mean, he preached, and uh, he talked about uh, 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 Langston Hughes, which is, uh, Langston Hughes is my favorite poet, and uh, he talked about a dream deferred. What happens to it? It dries up like a, does it dry up like a raisin or a rotten or a sore or woo-woo, whatever? You know, and I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he was right where I was. And that's what I love about going to church, especially down there. Right now, I've been going to that church. I haven't been to any other church, so I've been there. And, uh, I mean, it was really powerful. And uh, basically what he was talking about, do you know, do you let it go? And, and you know, you never know. I mean, it's just everything he said. It, it's, it's really what inspired me to really get back to the video thing because I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing no more videos. I'm not doing nothing. I'm going to back up for, for a minute from God because maybe he ain't told me to do nothing. Maybe I'm tripping because every time I'm trying to do for him, I'm like, Lord, am I your friend? Or am I your enemy? Because you treat me like your enemy. I'm trying to help you out. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing what I thought you was telling me to do. But every time I do it, I keep getting hit. And I'm talking about not hit one time. I'm getting knocked out. Shoot, I know some dudes can hit you and knock you straight out. <laughs> yeah, I've been in the street. I love dudes who used to hit you. can hit you with his yeah, they ain't dead. So they can hit you one time and knock you straight out. I ain't talking about, yeah, swing and miss and the air hit you. I'm talking about hit you one uppercut. And they not even on. <laughs> they not even in the boxer league. They in the street league. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank God for change. Yeah. Thank God for change. But, um, like I said, that pastor preached. I mean, it was awesome. And I needed to hear it because I was. 
when he keep, you know, he was talking about this guy, and uh, the guy uh, had an interview, and he was late for the interview, so the guy he was going to meet ended up writing him a little nasty letter saying, well, you know, first impressions is everlasting, so, you know, basically because he didn't show up on time, he left. So the guy made it while he was standing there, you know, and, and uh, reading the letter. Some lady, the a waitress was talking to him and like, you know, don't worry about that. I'm going to give you a free meal. And so in the process, she said, well, what was it about anyway? What was the meeting about? So he named it. It was alumni of a certain school and he was going meeting them for the job because he graduated from college or something like that. And so somebody overheard it and he was alumni. The guy was alumni of the school and he was the man that that didn't want to meet with the young guy, he was trying to get his business. So basically what the whole story peeled out is even though he missed that opportunity, he was sad and distraught. Here it was a real opportunity. God still turned around and blessed him with what he really needed. And the man ended up telling him he hired him. And then that man was going to have to come to him to ask for a job. So basically God made that dude his, uh, his enemy, his footstool. And so, I mean, that was powerful. And that's what I needed to hear because I just went through some stuff, man. I ain't lying. I was just telling people about it. It was like, you know, people just looking at me, you know, like for real, you know. And so, like I said, uh, it is what it is. But, uh, like I said, uh, here's some other stuff. I don't know who put this person on me. I played a CD. I played a thing for you, you all the other day. Uh, I played it. Uh... I played it the other day, and I've got it. Uh, I've got it again. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find my uh, my voicemail, and uh, the pastor. It's a pastor that called me. I hope you can hear it. Hello, this is Pastor Bob Rogers. I want to pray for you in just a moment. But this weekend, we begin a prophecy conference at Evangel. We have five of the most powerful prophecy teachers, including Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who wrote the bestseller, Harbinger. The services are Monday through Tuesday, with Monday and Tuesday morning services at 10 o'clock. I'm also asking you to bring cans of food or supplies from hurricane victims in Florida. We have a truck that will be uh, going to Florida very shortly. I want to pray for you now. Father, I find every demon in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to every weakness in your body. I come against lack, be gone, and I speak a revival and blessing to your family. In the name of Jesus, amen. I want to say before I go, I believe something good is going to happen to you this week. God bless you. So did y'all hear that? Like I said, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. I ain't been to church in a minute. And my number had been off. Yeah, we all know my number was off for a month. So I don't know. I, I think it's that chick, the one I told you to try to talk about, give her a hug up in the church. I think it's that they did the dirt and pulled me away from base. So uh, she got to have some type of, I'm, I'm thinking she got a connection in her. I'm not going to get in my head about that. But I don't know how they got my number. I mean, then again, it could be something different. I don't know. But I think the, I don't think the message was, they got my number, but I don't think it was really directed to me. I think it's one of them like uh, a prayer call or something where you call random people or members of the church or something. I don't know. They invited me to something on a Monday and a Tuesday. So I don't know. I'm not going, but they invited me, you know, and you know. They said it's Pastor Rogers. Last time it was somebody else, but they keep calling. And, uh, you know, I've been going through so much, I started to get on there <laughs> pray for me. You know, uh, that's another thing I loved about the pastor when he came and he talked. And he said he missed the plane. He said he hurried up and said some words, you know. And he said he wasn't holy. <laughs> and I tell y'all all the time, yeah, I feel like cussing. And I do cuss. I ain't going to lie to you. But I almost thought, I st called and I was getting ready to say, you know, I don't know who this is calling me on my phone. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what y'all were about. But when I was at your church, and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, uh, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't made to feel welcome. I wasn't welcomed. You know what I'm saying? It was cool talking. I, I got on the little women's committee, got the little book, 
and stuff like that. You know, I'm sitting with the women talking. Then one woman, she's so spiritual, she getting ready to float up out of the chair. You know, then she's going to try to tell me this or that. Now you, now, nah, boo-boo. You know, yeah, your talk with God and my talk with God is two different things. You know, I feel a little bit what you're saying, but when somebody starts telling you, you know, God did this and God, oh, I feel his prayers, and you know what I'm saying, and he's getting ready to do all this, I back up. And that's like they're getting ready to do now. I, 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 I believe in prophecy. I believe that, but I know to be lyric. Be careful. Be very careful when you're around a person that's prophesying because I had somebody do that at the church that I be at. I attend often. The chick tried to, a little young chick, Chichelle or something, she tried to say her name is, try to come up and do some proper fan saying she seen me at a church. And it was a building over on 22nd Street and it was, a, you know, all of that. And I learned my lesson even before then, you know, uh-uh, be very careful. Be very careful. Which really with me, you can't prophesy to me. If, it's, if God got something to say to me now where I'm at in my life, he'll say it to me. You know, as far as really like direction, but as far as in sermons when somebody's preaching something like that, I know. Like with that pastor when he was talking, okay, I was I could identify with what he was saying. He didn't say, "Hey, God told me to tell you this," but other than that, now nah, I would have to kind of know of the person, and they would have to really be detailed about something, not no garbage about you know, not no fake stuff. It have to be some real stuff. You know, tell me what I did when I was four, you know what I'm saying? You know, who was a perpetrator, you know what I'm saying, that harmed me in my life, something like that. And then you come to me with some details about that, then yeah, maybe I'll listen to you. But other than that, now, nah, that prophecy stuff, you got to be very careful. Because, you know, like I said, in my, in my walk trying to find God, I, I attended some meetings. And I never will forget it. What really started making me leery, too, it was some years ago, man, back, back in the 80s. And I went to a little church up here, Liberty, before they got this new preacher. It was a, more, a lot of different pastors that have had that church down off of market. And anyway, they had a revival. And, they, you know, so I'm like, I'm seeking God. You know what I'm saying? I'm still drinking and stuff then, but i always been involved in the church, like I said. So I get down there, and, uh, you know, I'm ready. You know, I'm still street. You know, I'm straight up street because I got my little dress. I don't know if I had to flip on it at the time. It was at that before I heard about the flip. <laughs> so it had to be before 2000. I'm right. It was in the 80s. It was before I knew about, you know, you need to throw a my, I knew mama told me to keep a slip on, but I wasn't into the slip thing. I was in the house looking sexy. So anyway, I'm up in the church, you know what I'm saying? And uh, she's, uh, she start prophesying, you know. She know, blah, 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 blah. She's speaking in tongues and all that. You know, it's a white lady. You know, and uh, which I don't care what color you are if you got the word of God, you know, at that time anyway. And uh, so, um, like I said, I'm not going to let her dictate how I feel about a person. But like I said, when you're around evil, it get, it penetrates you. And so that's why I said, I don't know if God's going to move me from it. But like I said, I gotta just I just got to keep focused. You know, I'm not going to hate nobody because she hates me for the color of my skin. I'm not going to go there with her. You know, I'm not going to go there. You know what I'm saying? But believe me, it is affecting my walk with God. I'll put that there. So anyway, this woman at this church down here, she's speaking in tongues and everything. She's dressed, you know, plain, you know what I'm saying, the poof hair like and stuff like that. It looked normal is the point I'm making. But no, you know, have some of them want to have all the jewelry on and they want to have all the jewelry on and, and then, you know, the apalaka, you know, and, uh, you know what I'm saying? They got turbans all that. Nah, she was just plain, had a little kind of like spiked her. I uh, know. So all of a sudden, she was like, uh, uh, she, you know, people running up. Because a lot of people, you know, that's one thing. Like them tent, old tent meetings back in the day, you know, you have a lot of people that really want to be healed. And so it was a lot of people there. You know what I'm saying? It's a small, it was a small, it's still a small church. But, you know, you know, maybe uh, 60, 70 people or something. So anyway, a lot of people was running up her trying to touch her. So she started walking and doing the hand thing. She's touching people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I'm the name of And, you know, I see for you. And, you know, you've been suffering. And, you know, you, gotta, you can't hear her. And she's saying this. So I'm looking at her. I'm like, okay, wow. You know what I'm saying? But then she keeps on. So I'm standing there. I'm like third from a couple of people. I'm like in the third row. You know what I'm saying? So because I'm like, I want her. I'm not going to stretch my hand out. Something in me said, don't stretch your hand out. Because if God got something for you, he's going to come to you. She'll come to me. So I stood there. Then, I, you know, the people running up past me like, so then I stood there and I moved to position myself again. 
while she touched their back, but she didn't say, she looked me in my face, and she didn't say nothing to me. So I was like, ah, okay, yeah, okay, you know. And to me, yeah, I deemed a fake. <laughs> yeah, after that, when I say that, you know, yeah, because I was like, if you was real about what you're doing, it wouldn't have been unless God told her, don't touch me. <laughs> unless God told her, don't touch her. But other than that, yeah, it was fake. Because a lot of stuff they say is just out in the open. And some of it, like I said, you know, on a picture one time, they'll go out, send them out in the audience, and I already asked you some questions and all that stuff. So, like I said, now nah, I don't believe she was real. You know, but what I did learn about life, you know, after that adventure, I learned in life that it's not so much a person touching you or healing you, it's what you believe. And basically, if you think about it, when Jesus was healing people, that's what he asked you, what do you believe? You know, most people came to him. Jesus didn't just run out touching everybody. People started running. The multitude was running to him. You know, I heard about that man. He could heal. So they started running to him and touching him. The woman touched his garment, and she became healed. But they was running after him. So, he, you know, you go to, to, to your healing with a belief. You know, why are you going to touch somebody? I'm going to touch, his, I'm gonna touch Jesus' uh, hand. I'm going to go to church. Uh, I don't know. I don't believe I'm going to get healed, so I'm just going to go, though, because they taught me healing. Yeah. You know, you get what you expect. So, yeah, the point I'm making, if you believe you're going to get healed, it doesn't matter if you're in church, out of church, a pastor touch you, a person, proper fan touch you, or what. If you believe, it's according to your belief that you heal. You know, and believe me, I've been healed a couple of times. God healed me and gave me remedies to heal me. So, yeah, I believe in healing. Don't get that twist. I believe in healing. And sometimes, like I said, when it comes to prejudice and racism, your mind has to be healed. And, and when you in, when, when I've, since I've been around her, it, it's changed me, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's a spirit. Hatred and evilness and racism, it's a spirit, man. It's a spirit. And you have to be careful because, like I said, for me to hate, I have to look at that. I said, man, if I start hating like her, my grandbabies are going to do it. You know, they see, if they see me respond to a different nationality a certain way, then they're going to respond that same way. And so do I want to take what I'm learning? Because it's easy to hate. It's hard to love. It's easy to hate. You know, hate 101, hate 102, hate 103. Come on with it. It's easy to hate. But love is what's difficult, what I, I perceive to be difficult. But do I want to take and break it down to my kids, my grandbabies? Do I want them to hate? You know. And then I looked at this baby when I was in church, you know, and it brought a renewing to me. Because uh, when I went to church, some white people sat in front of me, and the two ladies had babies. And, uh, you know, I church, that, well, it's not, I don't know, the, the, the church I attended, it's mostly black people. And uh, so these two white ladies were sitting there with these babies. And uh, they held one of the babies up on their shoulders. And I looked at that baby. And, you know, at this time, I'm kind of angry because I'm dealing with her. But I'm looking at this baby, and I'm thinking about how nasty this white woman is next door to me. But I'm looking at this white baby. I'm looking at the back of this white lady's head. And the baby looked at me. And I looked at that baby, and I'm like, that baby don't know nothing about hate. Hate Who, Lord Jesus. You know? And, uh... It just it just melted my heart, you know. It just slow it just slowed me down, you know, because I'm around her and I'm becoming like her and I don't want to become like her. But looking at that baby, you know, hey, be gets hey, that's taught. That's something taught. That's not just in you, you know what I'm saying. People can have some evilness in them, but just to hate a person for the color they skin, somebody teaching you that. That little baby right there, if you take that white baby and you put that white baby with black people, the only thing that white baby would know is that his skin tone is different than the other people around. Other than that, that child would blend in and be talking the same and eating and doing the same thing. It would know maybe it might have certain hereditary things from his father and mother, but other than that, it wouldn't be running around here talking about it hates niggers and it hates white people and all this type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, those, those are things that's taught. And do I want to take and breed that into my family? No, I don't. But I do want to address that issue. I do want that put on the table. And I do want it to stop. Most important, I want it to stop. But, uh, oh, man. Like I said, I was sitting talking, uh, uh, what was it, yesterday? I was sitting in, uh, uh, 
yeah, yesterday, I was sitting and talking to this man and this lady, mainly this man, and uh, he's going. He had been through a similar thing. We was talking, and he said, "Man, it's sad, you know, dealing. He talked with uh, dealing with racism issue, and uh, he said, "Yeah, he said uh, it's pitiful, you know. You got to come to situations like this, you know, to address it." And in this 2017, he said it seemed like a 1700. I said, wow. I said, man, yeah. You know, I said, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm glad you brought it up. So then we started talking. Woo, woo, woo. And then he was like, yeah. He said, uh, he said, uh, when he lived in this, he moved in this neighborhood where he lived. And he said, uh, when he first moved there, him and his neighbor got along. He's black and his neighbor's white. He said, when he first moved there, he said, uh, they got along. You know, we spoke and everything. He said, so one day he decided to put up a privacy fence. So he, when he put up the privacy fence, he had went away for a while. He had some men putting it up. He said, when he got back, the men that was working on the fence told him, said, man, said, man, oh, I don't see how you could live here. You know, said, man, uh, man, that dude right there, he hates you. He hates your kids. He hates everything about you. He said, man, he, I, don't, uh, I don't know if you knew it, but, you know, he don't like you and he wish you was dead or whatever and all this type of thing. And so the dude said, wow. He said, for real? He said, him? He said, yeah, man. He was saying everything about you. So uh, later on, you know, he said, uh, he started, uh, you know, he started seeing that he started treating him different and everything. And so later on, he ended up finding out about the guy is the guy used to work with his father. And when he worked with his father, said that he uh, he had something against some woman, some, uh, some black employee. And I don't know if he liked her or what it was, but something about he harassed her. And uh, they end up checking him out and found out he had a gun in the car. So I don't know if he was going to kill her or what he was planning on. But yeah, he said, and that's the guy he lived next door to. And I said, did you move? He said, no, nah, I still live there. I said, well, well, how you doing that? He said, yeah. He said, we don't talk to each other. I said, he don't say nothing to me. I don't say nothing to him. He said, and everything's fine. And I was like, wow, you know. And see, that, that right there, I just felt a chill. That's what's powerful. How God would take and, see, the devil was in my head, Janice, you know, you tripping, you know, and you the one making a problem, and, you know, they're going to look at you, and ain't nobody going to believe what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? You the troublemaker. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening to all that, but at the same time, I'm still going to go to court. You know, Satan get behind me. And so see how God put somebody in front of me to let me know that I'm going in the right direction and pursuing it. Thank God he didn't because evidently, plus he's a man, you see, he didn't keep pursuing it. But like I said, with her, yeah, because I kept on taking law. I kept on playing it off and not saying nothing, playing Christian and all this type of thing and letting out a little negativity and little nasty things she's been doing. I've been letting it go. And see, now I'm addressing it. So really, yeah, you know, God let me know, yeah, put it out there. God want to put it out there. Because, yeah, it, it exists. It exists. You know, it exists. A person can not like you for the color of your skin. And what was funny, funny in a way, and then not, about the story that the man was telling, is all the time before he decided to do his yard, they was okay with each other. And when he said that, it reminded me. She was okay a little bit. Thank my pipes had been cut up under my house when I first moved in. I had screens on my back window. They was missing, so I thought maybe somebody came and stole the house. Although when they was working on the house, she sat out there day and night meddling and was watching the house, which made me weird. It, it surprised me anything that had happened to the house. But when he made that statement that he put up at privacy fences when it started, when I started beautifying my yard and upkeeping my property, that's when she started. Because when I moved here, their property and stuff was dead. I'm not bragging or boasting. My house was remodeled, so my house did look different and was updated in there. But yes, uh-huh, yeah, she, that's when it started. But let me take it back. It, it had already started. That's when I started noticing it. Every time I planted my beautiful flowers, I put beautiful plants in front of the yard. I go back the next day, the plants wilted. She poisoned on something she did to them. So, you know, my mail's been stolen since I've been here. I had to call the U.S. Post Office and report that. So they had to come out and send an investigator for that. You know, I've had, I had called the police numerous times when my car got, I had a Cadillac that had a scratch on it. You know what I'm saying? The police don't tell me, oh, it looks like it came from a bush, but it's a deep scratch in the car on the same side that she lives. But the police don't tell me that, oh, it looks like a scratch of a bush. I called them another time. They're going to tell me that they can't, which I understood that they can't go over and tell her to not stop coming on my property messing with me. So I'm straight with that. But did they file a report? Probably not. 
But yeah, right? You think I stopped? That's why I stopped calling the police. So then I started just thinking like, okay. Then I got around people, Janice, you know, don't pay her no attention. Just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? She's wicked. You know, let God deal with her. Let God deal with her. Now, God done dealt with her. Now, I'm going to deal with her. I'm going to take her to court. I almost said a cuss word. But yeah, I'm going to make sure. Like I said, if they don't take and take, uh, if they don't file the court and she don't take any accept the paper this time with her ear hustling tail, because she used to sit and have a chair sitting by my, out in the front yard. So then when I'm in the house talking, she would sit there and listen to what I'm saying. And then when I'm talking to her, if we talking out there, she'll repeat some of the stuff I done said. It's real sideways, real slick, you know. Like when she told me her daughter, boy, one of her daughter's boyfriends blew his brains out. And her and the daughter had to go over and clean it up. So that shows you, yeah, I try to talk to her. But who want to deal with a person sitting saying that? So when you were saying that what you're trying to hint around, telling me you might blow my brains out? Hello. So what was that about? So yeah, it's the type of person I'm living next door to. So, oh Lord Jesus. Like I said though, you know, if it don't work out where they uh, have the hearing and stuff like that, at least I found, I'm going to refound and have the sheriff take a server. You know, so I'm, I'm not going to end it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep on pursuing it until it's, it's on the table. You know what I'm saying? And um, it is what it is because I got some more things going on. You know, um, I don't have time to keep running back home, you know, checking on my property and seeing what's going on. I don't have time for that. I'm not going to make time for it, you know, because I'm a personal person anyway, you know. <laughs> Y'all heard that? Personal person. I'm a personal, private person. I don't mess with nobody. I stay to myself. And most of the time, you know, I'm ripping and running, doing things, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm sitting here doing this video, you know. I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm trying to be about something. Idle hands is a devil shot. So I, I have things to do. And why should I waste my time talking to you when your, your only thing on your mind is gossiping and talking about the people up and down the street. She done told me about all the neighbors. That's all she does is run a map. So I didn't want to be bothered with that. I, I don't want to talk to you to gossip with people. Like my mama taught me, if you if a dog curry a bone, he'll bring one. If I stand and talk to you about the people that's your friends, your white neighbors, if I stand and run my mouth with them, then it would have gave them a reason to hate me, which they hate me anyway, but they ain't, they can't never come out of their mouth and say, I said nothing about them, because they ain't never heard me say nothing. I don't talk to her like that. I didn't bite into that gossip with her. So that's why she got angry, too, you know. So you know the word, but that'll up it to you know what. So it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. But I feel much better talking about it, you know. I feel better talking about it. You know, because uh, I got to get out here today, you know. I got to do what I got to do, you know. Uh, like I said, I just got to keep going, man. It's hard to keep going. It's hard. People just don't know. You know what I'm saying? Some bad thoughts cross my head, my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like just giving up. To me, that's a bad thought. When you just want to say, Lord, I'm tired. I give up. Let me go out here. I want to be about myself. Like dude said, just be about it, you know. Because it seems like when you're trying to step up, and help black people see see the light, you know what I'm saying, see the way, make a change, you know, and trying to help and save somebody, because when I'm trying to save somebody else black, I'm saving myself, I care about you, I want you to care about me, let's care about our community, when I'm talking about and, 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 and putting it forth, and you turn around and you don't see nobody helping you, nobody saying nothing, and you by yourself, you know, then you feel like, you know, is it worth it? But at the same time, God came back to me when I was thinking about, oh, yeah, I'm by myself. I got to turn this fan on. When I was thinking about me being by myself, and then God reminded me. He said, well, Elijah the devil, Elijah didn't work with Elijah's partner. Elijah didn't have nobody. Moses was in the desert all that time and stuff like that. Uh, the point is, a lot of people that he called, you know what I'm saying? When he called them and he sent them out to do things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you catch that. I'm going to leave it. You, you got it. Yeah. When God sent people out to do things, he didn't send everybody with somebody. When Elijah was out there, he was with all them priests. He was by himself. You know what I'm saying? So how dare I, because at first I was like, darn Lord, I ain't got nobody with me. Where's my partner? I used to always say, where's my Timothy? Where's my Jonathan? You know, then like I said, I ran into your girl, and I ain't heard from her. And then I was thinking like, darn, you know, maybe I said something. Maybe, you know, she don't want to be around me since I didn't, you know, succeed when she was around me. And then that was by, and then I thought about it again, you know, in the spirit, I prayed, God was like, you know, because I hadn't been praying like I used to, and the guy reminded me, if somebody is not there for you, then it's not, they're not supposed to be there. God will put in your life who he wants you to really be there. All you have to be is open to the people he sends your way. 
And thank God, God sent me some back. You know, I met a friend, you know what I'm saying? Which I've been knowing him and stuff like that. And he's cool. He's real positive and stuff like that. You know, and he kicks my butt. You know, like, hey, you know, <laughs> it get on me like, yeah, Janice, what? You know, stop saying that. I don't even want to hear it. Stop talking negative. You know what I'm saying? Stop talking that. You know, so I'm like, wow, you know what I'm saying? So that's cool. You know, and that's what I need. God will send you what you need, but not what you want. And so I like that. You know, I don't like it all the time, man. Let me take it back. I don't like it. You know, you telling me, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Stop playing and, you know, get out here and do something. You know, you got to get your money. Go get your money. You know, you don't be worrying about what's going on over there. You know, you do what you got to do. And so, yeah, I like it that. I like that. You know, and it keeps me going. It keeps me focused. So, like I said, uh, you know. And I miss my reading. I picked up my book today. You know, I want to get back to my reading. You know, it's like every time I try to get focused and things is going well, it's always some more distractions. This is happening. That's happening. And to the point people start, I was so exhausted. I went for a job interview and I was so exhausted. I started nodding. And so the lady, you know, was looking at me and they looking at me like they thinking I'm high and stuff. But that's how tired I've been. You know what I'm saying? Just mentally. Mentally. Not physically tired, but mentally tired, you know, where my mind was just totally overwhelmed, you know, when you, I don't know, it's easy to give up on your dreams and your vision, especially when you don't see nothing popping out, and it's been a long time, and I had a lady I was talking, and she was asking me about one part of my vision, you know, some things I thought, and, you know, you had it, and you didn't, you know, you, you had this, you started this little company thing, and nothing, no, nothing, nothing happened, and, you know, she said it kind of, to me, I took it as she was saying it kind of sarcastically, but at the same time, I couldn't respond angrily or nothing. I just looked at it and I said, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because in my mind, I already know. I can't sit there and keep waiting for somebody to call me about doing a, some work for them when I got to eat and I got to pay lg and &E and water. So, but I don't feel that. I'm, I don't have to uh, explain my life to you when you're not doing nothing for me. And it, as a matter of fact, the situation we in, you asking me to give you some money. So, <laughs> I really know I don't have to explain to you anything, you know. If I was getting money, I'm getting money. If I tell you I'm not, I'm not, you know. You know, some people, the, that's why I said you got to watch the devil, because he'll come to you and criticize you through people to make people, make you think that, oh, wow, you know, look, she just still, all this time she's been dreaming and nothing came about. She been talking all this stuff, ooh, boo, boo. She just talking, shooting wolf cookies. She ain't going to do nothing. She ain't going to be nothing. You know, that's, she's crazy. That's all up in her head. You know, and for a minute, you know what I'm saying, I start thinking that because I'm like, man, all this stuff I've been doing. And she made a statement, too, real quick. She said, oh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you just putting your money in it. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, damn, you know, oh, man, I'll... <laughs> I told y'all, I can't hurry up and get off her. I can't get off her, man. I told y'all so cussing. I said, man, she did. I ain't lying. This is the stuff I've been going through. This is the last two weeks. All this, people just turn me down. I'm talking about turn, just saying stuff, turn me down. You know, you dreaming and you're going to do this and you got that and you started this business and you ain't made no money off of it and you've been putting your money in. And then she came back to me. I swear, y'all, I'm not playing with y'all. Man, she she talked so cold to me for a minute. I ain't lying. She, you know, I, I was giving her hold my head down. And then she came back and made a statement. She said, "Yeah." She said, "And uh, do you tithe?" I said, "Yes, I tithe." You know what I'm saying? And then she kind of, uh, you know, she kind of like eased up. Then when I said, "Yeah," she gonna ask me do I tithe? I said, "Yeah." And so then, you know, at the end of it, and we was talking. She said something. Woo woo woo. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah, you tap it now. I'm not going to tap this week. I said, because I needed the tabs that I was going to do. I need them for this. So she just looked at me. Yeah, I started to say, so God can get you. <laughs> yeah, you ain't worried about what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? If I'm failing in a business, I'm failing and, and, and not succeeding in life, when you got your hand out, when you want me to put some money in your pocket, you're not worrying about where I'm getting it from. And, uh, but you want to sit, sit there and knock me for my business not coming. And then I was sitting there getting ready to knock myself like, darn, you know what I'm saying? It should make me cuss at first. But, yeah, I was like, darn, it is true. You know, I'm running out here putting out my, I've been putting out my pocket. I paid for this. I paid for this. Fifty-something dollars. I paid for all of this. 
You know what I'm saying? Then I thought with that little job, I thought it was really paying something. That job wasn't really paying nothing for real. I was going backwards. You know, and I, I don't even, like I said, I don't even know how to figure that one out. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I said, it's a crazy world out here. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, but at the same time, like my friend said, you know, sit down and look at the good things in life, you know, and today, though, you know, I was thinking crazy, but, you know, today, even with everything going on, you know, I'm walking in a lot, went to the store, and some dude in a black car, some white dude taking pictures. I don't know if he took a picture of the building. It looked like he was trying to take a picture of me. I'm like, I oh, man, I'll cheat for the camera, but I didn't want to go there. I just went out and played it on off for stuff. Because, you know, I don't know, you know, people do weird stuff. And the devil likes to take something. If you ever been walking with God and you ever noticed, you could have something on your mind and the devil will take and use other things to try to make you angry and start stuff. So anybody know what I'm talking about, you know. So that's why I don't bite into a lot of stuff. But like I said, as I was out today, you know, I looked at the sun and, and, and I had to think, like my friend said, you know, just be thankful. You know, basically what he's saying, be thankful. And I was like, man, you know. I'm not going to let her bother me, you know what I'm saying, I got a place to stay, a place to lay my head, you know, I said, it's a beautiful day, really, I look at it, it's beautiful, you know what I'm saying, you know, it's a front and a backyard, I can enjoy my front and backyard, regardless, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, somewhat, you know what I'm saying, I ain't got to worry about her, you know, for real, for real, you know what I'm saying, so, I don't know, like I said, I don't know, I, I, I say that, but, if I really wanted to go out fast and sit and chill, I can. I don't like sitting or looking across the street at them, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. That's why a lot of time I go to the park because I don't like sitting here, you know. Like I said, I didn't even want this house at first. It was like this door open. And that's something that guy said that really hit home too because he said, God opens doors. Oh, this was awesome. That preacher that preached. Oh, man, I can't think of his name. But he said, uh, he said, God opens door and God closes door. He said, but we always talk about God opening doors, but we don't talk about God closing the door. And he, in the verse he was talking about, he was talking about the Spirit saying no. And we look for the Spirit to say yes, but he was talking about the Spirit saying no or something. And I was like, man, that's powerful because, like I said, man, y'all just don't know. I looked at like over 2,000, probably 4,000 houses before I end up getting stuck with this one. Because, man, the house I wanted was deep in the poor zip code area. The house I wanted, the house I wanted, it had three bedrooms upstairs, big full, I'm talking about full porch. I'm talking about laid. Yeah. Down our 42nd and Cecil. <laughs> Woo, Lord. I ain't going to lie to you. Man, I ain't lying. I'm talking about a home. I'm talking about a home. Oh, man. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm telling you what I know. Yeah, I'm not telling you something I don't know and I don't think I believe. Man, I'm talking about down there. I'm talking about two sto three stories. In the, it had a full basement where you could have, it had two, you could make two bedrooms, really three bedrooms down there. Two bedrooms, then you had that big giant living room, pool table. The house was so cold, it had a grill. It had an indoor grill. In the backyard, I wanted my grow my own vegetables and everything. In the backyard, it had a screened-in area. It had a statue of the Virgin Mary in the backyard. I'm talking about full privacy fence to the top. Man. Mm-mm-mm. Woo, Lord. Mm. Living room. Large living room. Oh, my God. Upstairs, three bedrooms. Large bedrooms. I'm talking about large, large bedrooms. Big, beautiful windows. Had downstairs a little uh, den area and had the window sill that you could set in. I'm talking about hardwood floors, hardwood. I'm talking about, man, I'm talking about, I'm talking about what I'm talking about. Lay, lay before I get this. And then let me tell you what happened. Yeah, well, I'm on this about, like, you know, because I can hear people, I hear the voices, I hear everybody saying, well, why you get the house if, if it's bad? Like the lady, when I first started having some issues with the house, the lady started saying, yeah, uh, uh, I hope you're not suffering from bowels, uh, uh, what you call that, uh, bowels, doubt, or whatever you call that little thing they got. You know, and I'm thinking, like, 
uh, uh, you know, uh, like everybody that jumped in their house is perfect. I'm thinking to myself, you're a lie. Because you, you just told me that your old man has some issues. So, hello. So, uh, that's the same thing. But see how the devil will take. And, and, and when you tell people about your situation, they want to hurry up and make like, oh, you, you made a bad mistake and you're the only one. Which I did hear a lot of people say, was saying, well, I get the half. I had a dual agent and all this. So, yeah. But I'm still like, okay, got to close the door because he almost closed it anyway because I had some other issues with it where I wasn't going to get the half anyway. So, I was like, hey, close the door. And I would have got me something else. I would have waited and just waited for a half. But anyway, like I said, the house I really wanted was down there. And I mean, it was beautiful. And uh, oh my God, beautiful. The porch, you could just sit on the porch. I could see myself sitting on the porch and reading. It had a side driveway where you could pull your car, two cars to pull up in the side by the side of the house. I mean, I'm talking about, oh, man, I had a realtor. Oh my God, I had a realtor. I had a black realtor. Which it doesn't matter. I had a black realtor. Ooh. Signed the papers. Everything was signed. The house was mine. She came in and let somebody, to this day how she did it, I don't know. She let somebody come in and underbid it. Over, they underbidded me or whatever. I had the house. I would have had the bank finance. She let somebody come in and they paid cash for the house. And it took, it knocked me out. So a lot of people told me, said, by me already signing the papers and everything, it still was supposed to be in my house. But I don't know what all she did. I don't know. Like I said, you know she was fired. <laughs> fired up real quick. But yeah, man, I stood there and cried. She called me down. She said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Cannon, but it fell through. And I'm like, what? Man, and she had called me to the house. I'm standing on the porch, man. Tears just rolled down my face. I couldn't do nothing. And what was another thing that was beautiful about that home, like I said, y'all know I'm still like, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. What was so beautiful about the house, the history of the house is that it was previously owned uh, by a black couple who had one son. And he grew up, he went away to college or whatever, and he came back after they died. He went in the house and he remodeled the house. He put the new refrigerator in, did the hardwood floors. I mean, he updated everything in the house. All of the electric and put some of the electric plugs outside. I mean, he updated the stuff now and he did it himself. You know, and so I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, man, I, I was I was happy. And she came and she hit me with that. So that's why I said, yeah, it's not the only time I've been devastated, yeah. And so then, here it was, I looked at 2,000 some houses and didn't have enough for this house. Didn't have, every time I found something, didn't have enough. Didn't have enough. One and a half square basin, didn't have enough. Then this uh, realtor that I had kept on uh, calling me, oh, your time's running out, your time's running out. This house, this house, this house. They had to fire her, so believe that. But anyway, because she rushed me. So, yeah, it's, it, that was a part that played in. Yeah, she kept on rushing me, and that's why I ended up getting into this and getting next. You know, so like I said, I don't know. Like I said, but I know I didn't break my neck to get this house. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that without a doubt. So then I'm hurt. So then, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, it was another direction I wanted to go in. Yeah, definitely another direction I wanted to go in. And like I said, it played out. Because I'm like him. I called some people. They was building houses and everything. Called them. Never did call me back. Everybody got the lady. Called. Never did call me back. Called a couple of players. Never did call me back. And then after I got in here, then one person called me back. I'm like, ain't this? <laughs> you know, so. Anyway, like I said, um, that's just to let you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know. It was, this wasn't my first choice, and it's not my first rodeo, so hey. Oh, wow. So, um, I wish she could buy the house from me. That's what I wish. You know, back in the day, if y'all recall, if white people didn't want a black person in the neighborhood, they got a, a series about they catch Archie Bunker one time. Archie Bunker, they did an episode like that. Uh, a uh, black couple was going to move in the neighborhood, so all the neighbors got together and they ran to Archie Bunker. And they was telling Archie, you know, we don't want them in the neighborhood because they bring the neighborhood down and woo, woo, woo. And you know, Archie Bunker's known to be racist anyway, but Archie Bunker even piled for a minute about it because Michael, his uh, nephew, what is it, his uh, son-in-law, he was talking about, are you with that? Are you telling me, you know, whatever, whatever. So end up, some kind of way, I forget how it all went, but they end up uh, letting the black people get the neighbor, you know, by the house. And uh, in reality, 
if you think about it, like I said, you know, I'm a TV fanatic, but it ended up being the Jeffersons. If y'all ever watch all the episodes, if you ever know, if you know anything about television, Archie Bunker, the Jeffersons uh, were uh, sick, were taken from Archie Bunker. Louise used to clean, uh, what was it? She was cleaning the house. Wait a minute, what was Louise? Louise used to clean the house for miles. I think she cleaned for miles. I think that's where she came out for. But all of them sitcoms, people came from something else. But the Jeffersons came from Archie Bunker. George and Louise used to live next door to Archie Bunker. Before, while well, he had the cleaning business. Him and Archie used to argue all the time, calling each other bigot. And, and George Jefferson would call him a honky and all that stuff. They would go back and forth at it. So sitcoms back then was talking about racial issues. They really dealt with it then. And then George Jefferson ended up getting rich, and that's when he moved away. But yeah, mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact, when they moved away, I believe they invited Archie Bunker and them to there, and Archie couldn't believe that they made it. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's where it came from. But anyway, uh, they ended up buying the house. But back then, the point I'm making is when white people didn't want black people, a little part of history. If they didn't want you in the neighborhood, they would take and get together, and they would buy the house. You know what I'm saying? They would buy the house, I buy the house from you and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, I just posted some things on Facebook and tweeted some things, you know, talking about NBC where uh, two white people went and uh, one person was white, one person was something, and then one person was black. The realtor quote for the apartment quoted three different quotes, but for the black person, it was the highest price for the apartment. You know, it's talking about undercover racism. You know, things that, you know, hidden racism that people don't know about, you know. And uh, so it was powerful, you know. So like I said, uh, uh, yeah, that's what used to happen, you know. Uh, one day I'll tell you about the history of where I live. <clears throat> tell you a lot about the history of where I live. I'm hesitating about reading it up, reading up more about it, but it's a lot of history. I ended up working the chick that stole my car. What's funny, she ended up being the one that told me about what happened here. And I never heard of it. So, anyway, there was a lot of racial stuff that popped off in the area where I live anyway. So, they not. So the point I'm making to you, it's not like I'm in a new neighborhood and, and, and it's a new issue. They're familiar with the issue, believe me. They're real, 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 real familiar with this issue. In more ways than one. In more ways than one. So, yeah, we're talking about bombs. Yeah, we're talking about bombing a house because they don't want no black people in the neighborhood. Yeah, that's, that's the area that I live in. Yeah, it has a reputation. So, that precedes it. So, um, with all that being said, like I said, uh, it's funny. They didn't want to talk, so I'm already, what, an hour in or so? So, yeah, be like it be. So, um. I just keep moving. Like I said, I've had so many people negative around me. I mean, just taking and just crushing me, man. Just crushing me and saying stuff. Until, like I said, it hadn't been on Facebook. I'm not going to get out there like I used to anyway. Tweet and all of this type of thing, you know. And um, But I see guys, you know, sometimes I want to, uh, every time when I want to run and hide, I want to give up. And I want to do me. Don't never get that twisted. When dude said, yeah, all he want to do, you know, take it self, self preservation and looking out for him. So, hey, sometimes I get in that mode. But when I get in that mode, God comes back and he shows me some things. You know what I'm saying? That don't get you nowhere. It's not what he wanted me to do. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's not what he wanted me to do, be about myself. You know what I'm saying? I can. I can do that. Hey, y'all get y'all. Y'all ain't trying to change your community. You ain't trying to stop the violence. Look at this. You know, I posted a little article today about Chuck D, you know, the rapper, where he's talking about uh, uh, black people uh, getting themselves together. And then this black lady, she's talking. And so, you know, I hope people listen to it. You know what I'm saying? But not just listen to it, do something about it. You know what I'm saying? We need to own property. We need to own places, own stuff. You know what I'm saying? Invest in ourselves. I'm not, well, that don't mean I'm racist or against white people. That means that I'm looking out for my people. I'm just suggesting some things that we could do, you know, because one thing I do know, especially now in my life, that to be a black person, to be a black female, man, don't nobody know what it feels like to be black. 
I'm not talking about Asian. I'm not talking about Mexican. I'm not talking about Puerto Rican. I'm not talking about French. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about nobody knows what it's like to be black. And you know what else falls with that. Yeah, except but what it to be black. To go into a store and wonder if somebody's following you. To go in a neighborhood and wonder if you welcome or if the police is going to follow you. You know, nobody knows what it's that's like. Nobody knows what it's like to go to a meeting or go someplace and you're the only black person in 2017 for a meeting that should be open to everybody, but you're the only black person. <laughs> Like I said, uh, you know, nobody knows. <laughs> I give it a crack a joke again. <laughs> I need to stop. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows my sorrow. Yeah. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. What it's like for a person to treat you less than, not only treat you less than, to talk to you less than, to pay you less than, mm. to suggest you live less than, to suggest you drive less than, because the color of your skin. I think our skin is so beautiful though. I ain't lying though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't lying. Brown, oh, mm, chocolate, and I love chocolate, but I ain't lying. When I really look at it, I love seeing color, and I've learned a lot. So you know, I start looking at some history about our origin and where people came from. Yeah, man, I start looking at it, and it's real, some real talk, some real professors on there, and talking about where people came from. And it's one of them, I believe, I believe it, because I, I kept seeing it, and I believe it. But why they, why it got switched, I don't know. That's something that we need to address. Why we got low and they got high, we need to look at that. You know, we need to get together and look at that. We need to start talking about us instead of talking about them there and all of this type of thing. We need to keep addressing issues concerning us, our people. You know, and our needs, filling our needs. And uh, one thing this lady was saying, it's a video I posted. Uh, I forgot where it came from, but it was she was talking about the black church and the church is just getting money for themselves. And she's talking about in there, you know, because I don't support that part, but but I posted it because she was talking about black people getting together so on and thing, talking about how the Chinese and all of them they stay close to their origins and stuff like that, and how they buy own they have their own banks and all this type of thing. But we black people, a lot of us don't have a lot. But she felt a real ass that there are some black banks. There was a lot of black banks. I think it's one day I heard off of 12, uh, MW something, I believe that's black. Then the one setting up there off of chest, and I believe that's black. Um, there's a black bank. It's just that people don't talk about it. So I don't know what her uh, education about some things are. Like I said, some of the, because I post some things, I don't mean I believe everything a person's saying. Like I said, getting back when she's talking about the church. The church that I attend educated me and educated a lot of people. I mean, that's one thing I can say about Bates. And then as far as she was saying that churches uh, churches need to have schools, I'm like, I don't know what state she's in. I should have looked, but it really doesn't matter. Still, you know, a person can live here and not be knowledgeable about what's going on. Uh, Reverend Cosby here, he's over a school. <laughs> Simmons Bible College, you know. So I don't know if he would say black owned, but he runs the school. And he, so to my knowledge, I bet I give him perfect credit. He does an excellent job. You know, he's put turning out some uh, uh, educated youth. Uh, I've I've been in the facility, and uh, I haven't attended the school, but I've been in the facility. Beautiful, clean, gorgeous, nice security guard. Clean. I mean, clean from the inside out. I mean, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I mean, beautiful. That's how I like to say beautiful. They have a cheerleader. He has a football team. Uh, basketball team. I mean, I'm not gonna say he does, but in God's name, to God be the glory. And I don't give no man no glory, but to God be the glory. I mean, yeah, 
There's some churches out here in school, so there, I don't know where she's at, but here in Louisville, Kentucky, we have Simmons Bible College. And, and, the, and the, not only is that pastor there, but the pastor has other uh, 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 biblical uh, reverence pastors. A couple of the pastors I'm familiar with, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, the last time I looked online, uh, Pastor Bruce Williams was on the board there. So, I mean, it's some very educated, some very educated, yeah, very, what did they say, very, some educated, some educated men, brothers, African American, black men, yeah, some, uh, they got a lot of women, now, I'm not going to forget y'all, so some nice educated women there, female pastors and different people on the board there, as a matter of fact, another thing that I can't say that I did notice uh, while I was there, from what I've seen, has a lot of African American secretaries do a very well job. I'm saying that for the fact that I hear a lot of people say black people don't never want to open on time and they don't do this. It was run very professional when I was there, very professional. So I, I did. I, 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 you know, I love that. So, like I said, so yeah, to her. So I, I don't like. I don't think we should knock our churches. Uh, what Crefro Dollar and. Uh, Joel Osteen and all of them do because they're in a mega church and all that type of thing. I mean, that's what they do is what they do and what they did wrong is what they did wrong. But that's to that person. Just like, you know, you don't, you can't hate all black or hate all whites because of one person. You can't hate all police because of one. You know, let's not start doing that. So, yeah, that's the only issue right there that I didn't like that she stated, you know, you know, while past this. Because, like I said, that the church I attend, for, to my knowledge, you know, they do a lot. Like I said, uh, as far as some of the classes I've taken, it was nice. As a matter of fact, right now, they're doing uh, some kind of little Bible thing where you can go to each classroom and, and be taught by different instructors, different preachers and stuff like that. You know, uh, they have Calvin Gray teaching a class and a couple more people I'm not familiar with. But, yes, you know, there's a lot of churches that, you know, that are doing positive things is the point I'm making, you know, and um, sometimes we get uh, ahead of ourselves when we say everybody needs a school, you know. Uh, uh, it's something that came to me, the person taught me, uh, uh, count the cost. It's one thing this preacher told me one time, he said count the cost, you got to count the cost. And so, in order to have some things, you got to be, you know, most important, it's like that pastor said. And I'm going to sum it up, and then I'm getting out for her. And it's what that pastor said. Everybody can't have a school. Everybody can't have a business. Everybody can't do anything. And I love what he said. It's very important. He said, God opens doors, and God also closes doors. And because I know I've always listened to people, God opens doors, no man can open. God closes doors, no man can close, meaning to benefit me. But I forget also to benefit me and my purpose and the purpose that he has in he has placed in me can be. He might close the door and he's probably he said no. Like I said, I don't know what happened with that job and I'm still like what? I feel like Craig, you know, like your boy now. You know, on Friday, hey, you get fired on your day out. <laughs> I feel like hey, you get fired on your day out. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I don't know what the purpose is. But then again, like I said, I watch the people I'm around. I heard that chick talking negative, but at the same time, like my friend was saying, he said, Janice, he said, you know what? He said, you need to stop looking at that. He said, don't worry about that. Go on. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep moving. He said, because it could be, he could be protecting you. And I didn't think that he said, God could be protecting you from something. He could have moved you for a reason. He moved you. You know what I'm saying? Accept that and keep going. And, you know, it could be saving your life. And I was like, wow, you know, because it was. You know, like I said, because I open my mouth and I speak. <laughs> Ooh, y'all know it. I be talking. I be talking. And they used to say I talk too much. And my mother always said, you talk too much. Arm. <laughs> I almost cussed again. Mama said, you talk too much. Oh, my God, that girl just go. And then I found out we got a cousin. She's a lawyer in Chicago. Her name is Teresa. Teresa. And they said, man, she came here, she was talking. She came here for a few, she was talking a mile a minute. And they was like, oh, my God, who ever met you, Janice? <laughs> and so it's in the family. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she talked, you know, she talked. She was talk. She talked fast. I mean, she was gone. <laughs> and so, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, I got more. I got a lot of enemies. I'm quite sure I make enemies. Yeah, I make any more enemies than I do friends. 
You know, because of what I'm saying and what I've said. But yeah, I'm going to say it. Hello? You know, and uh, like I said, on the job, yeah, all that stuff like that. Yeah, they mad, you know, but I was my opinion because I feel you, was, you wasn't you was justified in what you did. It wasn't fair. It was wrong. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like I said with her, yeah, I'm going to take you to court. So, you know, I know you probably try to start something. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. You know what I'm saying? It just show you how you are. You know what I'm saying? Because I know how evil is. Evil, like I said, she called a white dude over to sit on the porch and sit there and mug me and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't try to retaliate. You know, I could get real ignorant with her, you know, and made some calls and stuff like that. But I'm not even biting into that with her. I ain't even go there. That's why I said I'm going to go on and take it legal. Because I know you ignorant and she's slow and you'll take and do something. You know what I'm saying? Then it looks like I'm the guilty person. But, you know, that's why I'm putting every... It's already on paper. I ain't got putting nothing on paper. It's on paper. Like I said, it's on paper. You know what I'm saying? You know, so... Like I said, all I can do is just keep my head above and just keep on walking and see what else God has planned for me. You know what I'm saying? There's my little paper right there saying I go to court for her, you know. And so I'm doing legal. I'm not sitting here throwing, you know, blowing no smoke up your butt, nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm doing what I said, you know. I also talked about buying from black people. You know, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. You know, like I said, I paid $45 cash. That came out of my money to take his case to court. You know, and they saying 11, 8, 17 at what is it, 1 p.m. It depends on if she served, courtroom 307, but that's if she served. But uh, like I said, I got to take these nails out, stop going to the Chinese shop, I'm family a black shop. Cause, uh, I heard some women saying it with some, uh, some uh, black chicks. You know, I ain't without the African American, so some black chicks uh, that uh, do nails. So I'm gonna look for them. You know, and like I said, I'm a ch like I said, uh, I thank God for encouraging me. I thank God for Bates. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, like I said, I was running to other churches, but right now I've been continually being fed. Down, you know, like I said, I took off for a minute and I couldn't go nowhere because I was like, man, God, you know what I'm saying? You treat me like an enemy instead of a friend, and uh. So like I said, you know, I, I, I drug myself there and I got there and I heard what I needed to hear. And like I said, you don't always have to hear stuff. Anybody will tell you, I don't go to base just for Pastor Wim. Never, never, you know, never have. I, 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 when I first went, let me take it back. When I first went, I went to hear the word. But I always, if he's not there, any preacher he has stand in, I listen to them. Like I said, Reverend Self, the lady that preached. I love her. This man preached. So, you know, Reverend Friend. Anybody he has, or, you know, he had a couple of people, hey, <laughs> like, not, you know, I'll leave or whatever. But other than that, you know, a lot of times, you know, I, I, I go to church, I go to hear the word, and I don't I don't dictate. I learned a lesson. I don't dictate where the word is coming from. You know, I just take it, you know. And if it's for me, it's for me. I'm quite sure it's not. I don't go to church like holy than thou, like I'm floating on air. Oh, I'm going to church, and the word that the preacher's going to preach is only going to be for me. No. I learned that through listening to other pastors say, so what I might hear be, is for me. Another person is hearing another part of the sermon, like when he's talking about the airport. When he's talking about him being at the airport, that part, something concerning the airport, somebody's patient. They might be hearing that. So everybody's spoken to, they hear the word of God in different ways, but God speaks to everybody in different ways. But the sermon, is the, I'm not saying the pastor is just for me. God brought that pastor all the way here just for me. No, boo-boo, I'm not cuckoo. I've been there, but hello. <laughs> I'm a little straight today. But um, like I said, I'm going to get out for her. And like I said, I, I didn't think I was going to say anything. I didn't want to talk. And so, you know, like I said, I said, well, let me uh, let me say something, you know, because I ain't down for the camp, you know. And then I was like, forget it. I ain't getting back down there. You know, I'm going to wait till I get on my feet. I'm going to wait till I get this. I'm going to wait till I get that. And then God was like, get on there, you know, just speak, you know. You know, and so I'm just saying that, uh, you know, I've been weary and, and uh, like I said, I, I, I've been so tired and exhausted. Like I said, I mean, I was just mentally, just mentally tired. I was drained, you know. But uh, I pray for the people out there I'm mentally drained. I pray for the people out there that, that are suffering, that are going through. And uh, I pray for my family. I pray for my kids. I pray for them. To get better, um, also uh, 
somebody on Facebook, one of the family members was talking about when family takes and uh, are angry and not speaking to each other, it reflects on the kids. Uh, right now where I'm at, yeah, it does. It, it, it does. It reflects on the kids like hatred. It reflects on the kids. But at the same time, there's something called be for real. And I'm trying to watch what I say because I don't want to say something and then regret what I said. But I'm going to say where I'm at right now is that you can love people from a distance. You can love your family from a distance. Everybody, you can't be around. You know what I'm saying? If some reason, sometimes, you know, if a child was molested or something like that, sometimes you can't be around it. Sometimes if it was violence, you know what I'm saying? If every time you're around each other, you fight, now you argue, it's best you're not around each other. Don't go around each other. Are we family? I'm going to go around and we're going to argue, we're going to fight, but I'm going to go around and no. Sometimes you got to leave it there and put it in God's hand. Let God bring you back together sometimes. Because some wounds are so deep that, you know, they can't get stitches. You feel me? You know, nowadays, sometimes you get a cut and they, they don't want to stitch it. They got to let it heal and stuff, leave it where it, it's still kind of open. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes that wound is open and, and you got to let it heal. You got to let God come in and heal some wounds. You know what I'm saying? And uh, to me, that's the only person that can heal it, you know. And so, like I said, I, I'm not uh, I'm not really uh, with my family. It's not... Uh, Man, I don't know. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? We got differences of opinions. You know what I'm saying? And uh, right there is right there. You know what I'm saying? Let God heal it. Let God heal it. If that's, the truth. If that's what God chooses to do, heal it. But like I said, right now, there's so many things going on in my life. Sometimes when you're going through a whole lot of turmoil in your own life, it's hard to take and be worrying about how can I forgive you when I'm trying to forgive myself and I'm trying to heal and I'm trying to get myself together. I don't want to be around you because I got to get me together. You know, God might heal you, but if he didn't heal me, then it, it, we're not equal yet. We're not equally healed. We got to be equally healed because there's no sense in I'm coming around you and you still up on the old thing and you ready to argue and stuff and I'm like, I ain't on it. So it, it has to be a mutual healing. That's just my opinion for right now. You know, so... um. To God be the glory. And like I said, I just pray for God, you know, talking to my kids. I, I, I don't want them to hate. I don't want them to be ignorant about life. I want them to enjoy life. Brother, it's here. I don't, I've always told my kids, go somewhere. You don't have to stay in Louisville. Go somewhere, see the world. You know what I'm saying? Find your place. Find your place where you want to live. Don't let this be your only world. T.D. Jakes, I always talk about him, and it's some powerful, like he said, if you only live in one area, then that's all you know. If you live in a place where everybody hates, there's a lot of racism going on, then that's all you think about. But until you leave this city and go other places where there is no racism as forthright as you might see wherever you live in or wherever you are, then you, you will have a life abundant. When you travel and you see things, as long as you stay there, every time you look around, you fighting and are you seeing crack everywhere you go, then a lot of times either you end up being in the crack out of drinking things. But if you go somewhere where that's not uh, being seen or exposed and, and you, you're around people that's different, then you see things different. You know what I'm saying? You know, just like they say, you heard people say uh, you can get a person out of the ghetto, but you can't get the ghetto out of a person. And that's not knocking the same thing, you know, when you get uh, white people say that about you get the, can't take the country out of them, you know, take people, you can take a person out of the country, but you can't take the country out of them because you have some people that always want to talk about people country, you know, say the way they talk and uh, Appalachian and all of that. Because, you know, it's not black people that's just poor. It's not white people that's just poor. It's a lot of different nationalities that's poor. And so a lot of people say that they poor, you know what I'm saying? They don't know how to use utensils and all this type of thing. So... The whole point I'm making is just live and do things different. If you're not happy in the, the area you're in, then move to another area. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I had times when she made me so mad and she was doing stuff at first. I was ready to leave, but I didn't have enough equity in my house to leave. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't have that choice right now because I'd rather have peace. I'm going to tell you right now, I'd rather have peace than live somewhere where I'm unhappy. And I'm not happy. And I'm not able to live my life the way I want to and enjoy my home. No. I would rather leave. I don't care if people say it's cavalry and it's running or whatever. I would rather go somewhere and be happy. Let let hatred stay to itself, you know.
So that's real talk right there. That's what I'm talking about. You know, go where you happy. Go where there's peace. You know. So like I said, I'm done. Uh, one, two, four, forty-two. Hey, God bless you and keep you. Bye.